Our Lord could sure tell a story that had punch in, in just a few words. I'm going to ask you something, though. Um, who of you want to win the lottery? Would you raise your hands? <laughs> you notice mine's up there, too. Uh, <laughs> you would like to, wouldn't you? And uh, I'm not going to go off on that, but uh, this story is so vivid, you know, and it, it really makes you pay attention. You know, I sure don't want to go where, where uh, Dives went. And I sure want to have the life that Lazarus got in the end. Um, money, money, money. You know that our world, our country, our people are just saturated with that word money. And we all need it. We all want some of it. But it must not, must not be the center of our life. But more and more, wherever I go, it's just money, money, money. Everybody talks about money. And uh, we can do better than that. Uh, our government is now on the verge of bankruptcy again. And I suppose they'll get us out, and raise uh, the amount that we can uh, borrow, and so on. And uh, they're really no example to us how to live. Uh, you don't go to them. On the other hand, they do. Uh, simply reflect the thinking and the practice of the people at large. Most people believe, buy now, pay later. Some of us really were brought up on this idea that you save first. Then when you can afford it, then you buy a car. Then you buy a, a house and so on. We were brought up on that, and I'm not saying that uh, you know, everybody can do that, but certainly buying a house. But there's uh, just, I would love to get your attention and say that's, you know, we're caught up in the social mind and practice. Um, can money really buy happiness? I know you know that it can't. Still, we're constantly bombarded by commercials all day long about how money will buy happiness, all about that. There's less and less time for any substance at all on television because they're paying all these people all the time with all the commercials. It's just a garbage place. So uh, there's a common notion that having more money is going to make us happier. And for the most part, it's just not true. I think most of us are sort of nodding. Yeah, I know in theory, Father, but, you know, we got to pay for all these things. Well, I thought maybe I would try to get your attention this way. Uh, I, have <laughs> I have files on every subject that uh, when I die, it's going to be a bonfire. It just... Uh, <laughs> No one's going to want them, no one's going to understand them, but for this moment, I thought, well, maybe you would like this. This uh, is from People magazine a few years ago, and it says, the high cost of winning. So the first guy on here is here. He won uh, almost $6 million, blew it. <laughs> he was 20. He blew it. You know what he does for a living now? He delivers pizza. That's, that's a true story. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's to get you. Here's a, another girl. She's 17, and she won $4 million. She lost her fiancé and peace of mind. He wanted her to buy the ring, <laughs> and he'd pay her back someday. So uh, the next one is worse. This man won $315 million, and... Um, he went to jail about four times. He's busted for everything. And um, uh, he says the worst thing that ever happened to him was winning the lottery. I know what you're saying. I'd like to try. Everybody says the same thing. I'd just like to try it. That I wouldn't do that. Well, we're not so sure. Uh, the third one is this man lost his marriage and took his life. I'm trying to be dramatic because we got to 
get the attention that this is not where happiness is. It isn't. Here's a nice girl that uh, uh, she won just <laughs> just a million and a half, and uh, her husband took it all, and they broke up. Um, here's another one. This guy, uh, his brother hired a hitman to kill him, and uh, he ended up in divorce and bankruptcy. So does money make you happy? Not that kind. I do have a lovely footnote. Here's a nice, one of those ladies that goes to mass in the morning. She's elderly. She's a nice Catholic lady, and she won $8 million. And do you know what she did? She gave it to the church and to the poor. Didn't keep a penny. So who's happy here? You answer it. I can't. Um, the parable uh, about Dives and Lazarus, I think, is not about having money, but it's what you do with it. Money hardens our heart. And so many people say, well, I got mine, they can get theirs, you know, they're poor and it's their own fault. We use all those same arguments, but I wish really that we would stop thinking about how to get more money. Stop thinking about how to get more money and instead focus on getting the most happiness for the buck. Getting the most happiness for the buck. There is a new book out um, just this week, I saw it, and it's called Happy Money, The Science of Smarter Spending. And the message in this uh, through research and so on, suggests that spending less money on stuff, and that's why we have all these places, you know, to store our stuff, and I'm guilty too, I just haven't had to move out yet, but um, more on experiences, taking, as many of you do, taking your children uh, and your grandchildren on I know somebody did, uh, could do it on a, on a cruise or down, you know, to uh, Disneyland and so on. Vacations, travel, dining, theater, school, getting ahead, being more uh, autonomous, having more leisure, just doing nothing. Do you ever have any time, like, where are you going? Out. What are you going to do? Nothing. That is leisure. That's essential for our spiritual life, I think, and for our mental life. Well, the new book goes on to say far more than that. It says that the happiness that people get, this is researched, is from spending on others, and especially the poor and the needy, and giving to charity, and buying gifts for friends and family, being generous, being magnanimous, you know, go in, you know, fill them up, give everybody a, a milk, a glass of milk or something like that. Buying gifts for people, giving directly to the poor. All these people that come to the door uh, wanting money, uh, I know you could say, I'm not sure about that. Well, if you wait till you're sure, you can keep all your money. You have to take a chance on somebody. And the poor person, uh, standing there trying to get something, whether it's for himself or somebody else. He needs money. So you do what you like, of course. I think we need to bring in Bill Gates as a really extraordinary example of a man with almost a trillion dollars <laughs> and what he is doing with his money most of the world knows about. He is spending it not to give handouts, but to educate people so that they're able to work for themselves. Nobody really enjoys handouts. We enjoy saying, I earned it, I paid for it, I worked to get this, and here it is. And that is what we teach people through education and through all kinds of um, occasions to help people to you know, learn something, have a skill, stand up, and make a living for yourself. So I hope you find those interesting. And there's a really good joke at the end. At the end. <laughs> and now the dessert. 
An elderly gentleman had serious hearing problems for a number of years, and he went to the doctor, and the doctor was able to have him fitted for a set of hearing aids that allowed the gentleman to hear 100%. The elderly gentleman went back in a month to the doctor, and the doctor said, your hearing is perfect. Your family must be really pleased that you can hear again. And the gentleman replied, oh, I haven't told my family yet. I just sit around and listen to the conversations, and I have changed my will three times. <laughs> so go in peace to love and serve the Lord.